Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I have a very special guest in the office for a show and tell. It's Bill Duran, Punish Props, all the way from Seattle. Yes. Oh, and yeah. a wonderful prop maker who has a great YouTube channel of his own. Uh, but you should also check out not only his projects, but also his books. Brand new book. He teaches you how to make props. Foam fabrication is yes. your speciality. Yeah, we did the, the first one was on foam armor. Mm -hmm. And the new one is on foam weapons, props for, for conventions and for cosplay, usually. It's called Foam Smith 2, and you have examples in here. Um, but today, we're actually going to talk about some more traditional props that you've made, some resin kits. Oh, yeah. Specifically something that you showed off at a recent convention, Emerald yes. City Comic Con. I was just at Emerald City Comic Con. I was dressed as Han Solo. Nice jacket. Like you do. And TFA Han Solo, I can totally. tell. Totally. Oh, yeah. I, I left the, the tubes at home. Um, my wife and I thought it'd be really fun to make a bunch of Ray Blaster kits, mm. and I had, I think I had four of them, and then we went and found Ray cosplayers, and asked them if they wanted to do like a skit for our YouTube video, which, which was honest, uh, but then when I gave them the gun, the way that Han Solo gives the gun to Ray in the movie, they were like, oh cool, and then I just let them keep it. Oh my god. Yeah, which was really, really fun. Wow. So, some of the, some of the cosplayers didn't really know what to do. Oh, oh, okay, thank you. But some of them lost their minds, Freaked which out. was really, really fun. Yeah. And yeah. rays of all ages. Yeah. There's, there's one that was about, about oh. yay tall, like really, really. And she was a boss too. She was like, it was great. Awesome. Well, let's talk about this uh, Ray's blaster because you've been working on it for a while. Yes. You actually have a few articles on Tested about the finishing process. Yes. And you've documented it on your site and your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about how you came up with this. Because sure. you know, the movie's been out for a while. The, the Blu-ray's out. Yep. And, but you've been working on it before. Even Way you before. had that direct reference. Yeah. So I just scoured the internet. There's a great thread on the RPF um, with reference images, photos of the uh, screen use prop. And uh, I just kind of went from there. I did a lot of guesswork, but I wanted it to be, I wanted to finish it. And then the bulk of it was done in 3D modeling. Mm. Um, I believe for that one, I used uh, one, two, 3D design to do the CAD work on it. And it's a fairly simple model. It's not too elaborate. I was able to knock it out pretty quickly. But specifically, I wanted to 3D model it so it would be good for printing and for mold making. Because I knew I would want to make more than one of them. Right. So the kit that we have here is exactly that. Something that was 3D printed, sanded and finished, really nice and smooth, so you can't even tell it came off a print bed. I can't tell, yeah. It's yeah. Super smooth. Lots of sanding, we used filler primer, we, we used normal primer, lots of wet sanding. Uh, and then we made a bunch of uh, silicone molds to cast mm -hmm. all of these in a urethane resin. Wow. I mean, I look at this and like the grips, they're immediately reminiscent of the DL44 yep, grips. Yep, exactly. Right? They're a little from, bigger actually from though. The Mauser C96. Um, so there's that lineage there. And could you have done all of this in like one casting? Yeah, you could have. Um, but usually then you have a big seam to worry about. Mm -hmm. You have one big mold. Um, and for in this case, uh, the handle grips can be cast in a separate material. Right. So um, I'll do these sometimes with a black resin, uh, so they don't need to be painted. They just come out of the, the mold ready to go. Um, and then the different directions that you pour it makes make a difference um, for getting bubbles and everything. So it made sense to, to make a break apart kit like this. Wow. Uh, so all this 3D printed and uh, what we're going to do is basically put it together yeah. and do a light assembly, uh, get up close, show you Bill's Ray's blaster and um, and then get started right away. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, Bill. Uh, let's, before you put it together, uh, yes. talk about the individual parts and also what we're going to use. It's super glue? Sure. Yeah. Just super glue for this. Um, if you're assembling something and you need a little more time to align the parts, then I... Uh, uh, five minute epoxy works really well, but mm -hmm. cyanoacrylate is the good stuff. Yeah, and we of course, have, the set. That's right. The kicker. Um, so yeah, we have the grips that just go on the side. Okay. And uh, I don't have them with me, but some real hardware can go in there, some, uh, some uh, cap screws. And actually, that one goes like that. The little swoopy part points back. Okay. And then uh, there's a plate on the back of it here that will cover. There was a sprue here that I cut off and then this part will cover that and hide our crimes. Uh, and then this part will glue right in there. Um, and if I'm worried, uh, it should be fine, but I could put some pegs in there, some pins to, to, lock to them in. keep it a little bit stronger, but it, it should be fine for our purposes. Uh, trigger, trigger goes down in there, just like so. 
uh, hammer goes on the back like there and the barrel goes on uh, and there's another under barrel part there that I forgot but there's a little another part that goes on there. Fairly simple, straightforward and uh, super quick. All right, well, let's uh, get started assembling. So All right. Start gluing it. And so uh, yeah, as, as you start, I'm gonna ask you some questions sure. that I want to know about this, the molding process and yes. the whole 3D printing process. Because as I was saying, you know, even though you designed this in CAD and you 3D printed it um, at like 100 microns, I can barely see any print lines. Like, right. I can't see any print lines. The major thing there was when it came off the print, print bed, this was on our, uh, our Dremel printer at, uh, in PLA. Um, I sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper until I couldn't see any more lines. Um, that was the, really the major the step there because then uh, any finishing work I do on top of there is just going to improve that surface quality. So I did that and then I hit it with some automotive filler primer. Uh, that's a thicker primer that really, really fills in anything left that's going to cause you any problems. So uh, I did that and then I sanded it again. Uh, I think I went to like a 400 grit for that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, again, I, I took it, uh, looked over any spots that needed a little extra love and I used some of that red putty, the, uh, the filler putty, to uh, handle any of the deeper areas that really needed, oop, that needed to be filled in. And then I could sand those down. Then I hit everything again with more filler or more primer, just normal primer. And that was really just to be able to see what was left to be able to, uh, uh, whoops, oh, to spot some, uh, yeah, spot some problem areas, anything that was left there. And then I wet sanded that oh my God. to probably just like 600. It didn't okay. go wacky, uh, not Harrison Crick's level of wet sanding. Right. But um, yeah, and then, then and only then did I commit to silicone because silicone is expensive and I wanted to cast a handful of these things. So I uh, made a whole bunch of molds. Some of them really tiny, some of them a little bit bigger. Make sure the trigger goes in here uh, in the proper direction. That's important. Well, it's a little snug. And I can tell, you know, just looking at the seams for something like the barrel here, that's just a simple dump mold. Yeah, a one part mold, a cylinder tube that I put it in, and, uh, and then I cut a seam. There's a seam on one side there. Mm -hmm. And I cut that into the mold afterwards. And that'll get sanded down later and you won't even see it. Cool. And it was so important for you to get that sanding and that priming all done in your prototype. Yeah. Because that's going to be the, the perfect one that all your other castings are based on. Exactly, of. yeah. And uh, uh, it's a little extra work early on to save yourself a lot of work later. Um, like so. A little... Spritz with the goo. I like that even on the hammer, the knurling on that yeah. is visible. And that's that's all part of the print? Uh, yeah, well no, actually that one I tried. I did try to print that level of detail, but that uh -huh. was a dream, it didn't work. Okay. So what I ended up doing is I found a tool, a little um, uh, chuck for a, a really small dr uh, drill driver. And I um, took that tool apart and I cast it and cut it into a little piece. Uh, in urethane plastic, and then I glued that on there. So that's this screw right there with a little bit of knurling on the side. A little bit of real heartburn. Yeah, I just took apart one of my tools. So this is like a collar that fits around that part right there. And that just gets glued in place here. And that gets you your perfect alignment right in the center. Yep, so I don't. there's no guesswork involved. And really, you said you designed this to be a kit to be put together. Yeah, exactly. And you can paint parts separately if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, let's what did you cast this in? This is cast in Smoothcast 300 from Smooth On, uh, which is the style. I use, that's my go to resin for just about everything. Has your night flat fit, a nice flat finish. Yeah, a little um, bit of tint in there so it's gray and not mm -hmm. bright, bright white. So uh, what, what, when, when you took it out of the molds, how much actually uh, additional finish work did you have to do? Um, we had to cut all the sprues off, which there were um, a, a few. Uh, and then there's a little filling. I still have to do some filling and finishing on some bubbles there. But that's about it. Um, the seams will need to be sanded. They haven't been done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if we can finish this guy off here. Like so, really bathe it because we need to have some good support. Hit the uh, bits right there. Oops. And then I just Make sure it's nice and straight in there. And hold it for a little bit and it should cure pretty good. It's getting there. It's all plug and play. 
It really is. And then this one, it's important the, um, the holes go on the side. So I will glue it and look down the middle to make sure that it is, uh, in fact, straight on the gun. Now you said there are a lot of resources on places like the RPF. Yeah. People have dug up images, and now that the movie's out on uh, digital release and Blu-ray, uh, you can you know people have taken screenshots. But mm -hmm. at some point, like there's there are blueprints online that like, you can find some really good schematics if you want to design it yourself, or even find models online. Um, yeah, there are actually there's a couple models on Thingiverse. I did mine, and I made a blueprint, just a 2D blueprint, which is actually I um, have on my website for free if anyone wants to go get that. Uh, it's just a side view and a top view of the gun so that people can make it in whatever medium they like. Uh, hey, look at that. All right, that's it, Bill. There you go, Norm. Oh, Very awesome. Own blaster. I'm no Ray, but this is definitely appreciated, and I'm going to take it home and give it a paint job, finish it up, get some wow. final sanding in. I'll be back for Maker Fair. If it's ah, not done by then, yeah. then I'm taking it back. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Deal. Um, now, you're not selling these kits no. yourself. No, you no. Made, this is a limited run yep. for friends and family mm -hmm. and for Rays at, comic, at yep. comic conventions. Uh, but people can find the blueprints for free. Yes. Right on PunishedProps.com. Uh, it's a 2D blueprint. You can build yours in whatever medium you want. Mm -hmm. I do have a video on how, on how I built mine using yep. a 3D printer. All on our YouTube channel, Punished Props. Over there. All the links are below in the description, along with links to Bill's awesome books Boop. about foam fabrication. They're called Foam Smith version one there and you go. the sequel, Foam Smith Two. You know, speaking of foam props, you want to stick around and we can do uh, do yeah. build. Sure. Yeah. So we're gonna have we do a week of build with Bill. Yes, we are. A week of Bill. It's a, a full week, week of Bill. Bill. Uh, you're going to find that on the site in the very near future. But until then, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.